You're listening to Represent Radio 107.3 FM. I am your host, Red at the Don, and I'm here with an extremely special de- uh, guest, all the way from Atlanta. We've got Black in the building. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, sir? Pretty good. Good. Now, I'm a big Black fan, so I have to ask this for all the big Black fans. Where have you been? Uh, I have been growing. I've been learning. I've been healing. I've been doing therapy. I've been practicing, just like having routines for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been checking myself, looking in the mirror. Uh, I think I've been doing everything necessary to like present myself to other people. And that took five years. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it takes two days. Sometimes it takes a few years. Sometimes it takes five years. So sometimes for some people it takes ten, twenty. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But you know we we're starving out here, man. Uh, not us, really. A hundred percent. Not really. No, you I left was, a big gap. I was I was giving pieces in between. I didn't I didn't. Just you was giving features. Yeah. You was and you gave us six piece. Exactly. You know, but exactly. you know it's not like an album. Though. I know it's not a whole meal. You know? Yeah. It's, it's not. Like, you know it's a little snack piece here. Yeah, a little appetizer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've been good though. I've been really, really good. Good. Are you enjoying London? Uh, yeah, for sure. You just said you've been out all night. Yeah, I was outside when it started snowing this morning. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What did you do? Um, I went to Tape last night. Okay. I went to the Standard Hotel last night. Sick, yeah. Um, it was pretty fun. At one point, somebody wasn't, like, trying to let us in somewhere. Really? And it got a little bit weird, and then somebody else came, like, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know who this is. Oh, fair enough. What's your favorite thing to do when you're here? Uh, find food. So, mm. yeah, Indian food, uh, Jamaican food, whatever okay. I can find, uh, I just want to eat. You've been Brixton? No. You need to go to Brixton. Okay. So, I like to Jamaican food. You need to go to Brixton. It's in South London. Yeah. Best part of London. Learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, so, your new single, Since I Have a Lover, mm-hmm. I feel like that was a double entendre in the title. I feel like that was a warning to the fans about a possible new sound and direction of where the album is going, is that true? It's more of like introduction to a new feeling, but not mm-hmm. necessarily like there's different vibes, different moods, mm-hmm. uh, things that are reminiscent of the old album. Yeah. And I think since I have a lover was just like continuing to nudge people and let them know like we can do whatever we want, whenever mm-hmm. we want. It can be acoustic, it can be alternative, it can yep. be rap, it can be R and B. I never want people to box me in and think, okay, you're this type of artist who can do this type of thing. So uh, yeah. since I have a lover was being like, I know what you want, but I'm I'm gonna do what I want. So it's kind of a warning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um any surprises on that? Uh, plenty, yeah, plenty. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they're the one full feature is Don Tolliver, like the, Ooh, that's, that's the main feature. But that was really good as well. Yeah, I love Don, one of my mm-hmm. favorite artists. But other than that, they're like bits and pieces from everybody. There's ad libs, mm-hmm. harmonies, uh, from different friends throughout the industry. So yeah, you'll 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 hear people pop up. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, you dropped a letter to your fans, mm-hmm. which I listened to the other day. I was on the train trying to listen to um, your new single, and I was there like, oh, I just heard talking. And yeah. I was like. Oh, this is nice. This is sweet. Why do you feel you get to do that? Um, just because I've always tried to keep that direct line of communication between me and the people who listen to my music. I think that a lot of the times there's like this almost like untouchable, unattainable part of artistry that make people like feel a separation between the artist and the people who listen. Yeah. So for me, it was just like checking in and letting people know like I do appreciate, you know, the people who have been waiting. Mm-hmm. And I do respect the people who have been waiting. So uh, this is what I've been up to. This is how I feel. And... Thank you. It felt great to say. Thank you. Yeah, it really did. Um, so I was listening to Rory and Moore's podcast the other day, and Justice was on there, and he was talking about how it's kind of hard to introduce new R&B artists to the world because it's harder to reach the R&B fan. Do you agree? That came off the back of, you know, Diddy coming out and saying R&B's dead and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with what Justice said, and how do you feel about what Diddy said? Um... I guess I kind of agree with, with what Justice said, that mm-hmm. the world and the algorithm and the mm-hmm. climate, like things are different. And for whatever reason, it does feel like you're up against something when you're introducing yourself. Not even just, you know, for R&B. Mm-hmm. I think as a new artist, it's, you feel like you have to get past like a certain layer in order to break through. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I definitely agree with Justice. And I don't think that any genre could ever be dead because there's always somebody doing it well. So Yeah. Because my thing with the whole Diddy thing, I knew, for me, I knew it was marketing. Yeah, for sure. I like, 100% like, you've got a new R&B label coming up. Because you can't say r and dead. And the first two singles, you have the two biggest people that was in R&B for the last decade. So. Yeah, no, that's all it yeah. is. It's just like getting people riled up. I think everything is for, you know, uh, 
responses and interactions yeah. and engagement. So. I'd like to relate that to UK R&B artists because for us over here, I say us because I'm kind of like an R&B presenter, um, it's very hard to get people to listen to R&B music in the UK. And we've got like world-class talent artists over here that kind of get overlooked. It's kind of frustrating for them. Um, do you listen to any UK R&B artists? Um, I'm still a newbie, like, as far as discovering. I think that, like, this trip, I've been making it a priority to link with more people who can, like, facilitate a playlist or, like, things that I can get into. But I do have stuff um, coming with UK artists for sure. So I think uh, I, I don't want to give away nobody else's yeah, secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, there's a few things, bro. Okay. Because um, I've got a playlist, actually. Kind of, like, oh, yeah, please. You can R&B play so Please. Kind of to manage or whatever. Please. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and lastly, before I go, I just want to ask, do you feel like you still have the worst luck of love? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I think that that was, like I said, Free Black Era yeah. was a moment of not really um, being accountable. It was a lot of emotions, mm-hmm. and it was a lot of pointing, and there was a mm-hmm. lot of like self-doubt. And now I'm at the part of my life where regardless of what it is, if it's love, if it's uh, communication skills and it's like whatever it is like I'm just practicing being better and I could never like talk down on myself so uh, I definitely don't think I have the worst luck with love anymore okay, that's a lot of growth yeah. maybe the five year break was worth it it's definitely worth it 